Brian Zug here with Bootstrapper Studios. I am here with the lovely Rebecca Lovell, who's the ch uh, chief bis business awesomer That's right. at uh, GeekWire. So Rebecca, tell me a little bit about uh, the event here. What's going on? Well, we are just delighted to be partnering with Startup Weekend. Let me see if I can do it all in alphabetical order. Startup Digest, Hops and Chops, Tech Cafe, as well as our sponsors, to really put together a show of force of the tech and startup community. It's all geeks welcome, including geek dogs and geek kids. We've got uh, lawn games, we have adult juice, we have kid juice, we've got barbecue, everybody's favorite. And I'll tell you what, if, uh, if in Seattle we didn't barbecue in the rain, we'd never barbecue, so this is clearly not going to slow us down. So um, I'm, I'm really impressed by what you guys have done at GeekWire so far. It uh, seems to me, um, you know, I've been around the Seattle tech community for a long time and seems to be developing into quite an asset. So tell me about your role there and kind of like, you know, uh, what brought you on board and like what, you know, um, what excites you about going to work and being part of that team each day? Happy to. I could do that all day long. So, um, so John Cook and Todd Bishop, you're right, absolutely have been assets in the tech uh, and journalism community for each covering their beats for over a decade apiece. Uh, so they are the absolute dream team. Uh, really built some amazing readership within even three weeks of launch. We've only been at it for four months, if you can believe it. It's hard to believe. I know. Awesome. We've gotten so much traction. And for me, starting as a reader, and now, of course, as their chief business officer, it turns out, um, I love the authenticity of their writing, you know, and there's something about telling the stories of not just tech, but people and technology and innovation and the impact it has on society um, and really shining a light sometimes on the sort of countercultural aspects of geekdom uh, and being somewhat provocative. I find as a reader, it's not just passive consumption of news, but it's this open invitation to participate in what really is a conversation, whether it happens at a barbecue or happens online or on Facebook or any number of other channels. We really want to catalyze this conversation and you know, the, I would say that our, our sort of stretch goal is putting Seattle on the map of innovation in its own unique and best possible way. So I was, um, speaking of this weekend in particular, I was really impressed by the coverage that uh, GeekWire had around the intellectual ventures, uh, This American Life Story. Um, so, you know, I've been a nerd and a geek for a long time, right? And like we're dealing with this kind of issue where we've won our culture is now mainstream culture right so like this american life is doing stories about um, software patents and copyrights and then you guys are like bringing the full local you're getting the quotes from intellectual ventures and how, i mean that's awesome and incredible i mean how's that on your end <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the kind of thing that gets me out of bed in the morning. Regardless of what side you come down on the story, it's clearly a nuanced issue that, as you said, has been bubbling up in those sort of counterculture geek communities for years. And so a part of what we do is shine a light on that geeky stuff that's uh, very material to our business and to innovation with a sprinkling of editorial in there. I mean, just by the questions that you ask, like I said, it's, it's somewhat provocative. It catalyzes conversation and those kind of polarizing issues, whether it's you know who what's going on with the leadership at Microsoft or gosh Netflix just changed their business model that's what gets people talking and for me I just it, I just get so excited when I see a comment thread that's 40 strings long and people deeply care and we have clearly touched a chord and then so what's your background and what what did you do like in the years before joining GeekWire and and what made you like kind of transition over to that and kind of what's your whole background yeah thank you so I have a long and checkered corporate past before <laughs> Before going to grad school and getting my MBA, and uh, the stars lined up. Uh, after that, I ended up actually running an angel investment group here called the Alliance of Angels. Did that for about three years. So I spent all day, every day, coaching startups and ostensibly picking the best deals on behalf of my angel investor members. Uh, and after that, I moved on to my next dream job, just another you know serendipity kind of working its, its magic. Uh, and I was the executive director of the Northwest Entrepreneur Network for about two and a half years. So doing a lot of what I did, which was 
being a part-time coach and a part-time matchmaker, but serving entrepreneurs versus strictly the investor community, but still spending time with all of these smart, driven, passionate, inspirational people. And uh, if you knew a little bit more about me, you'd know that I'm not a sit on the sidelines kind of girl. <laughs> and so after five years of hanging around startups, you know you're going to catch the fever. And frankly, it was John and I sitting down over a beer, in my case, a, a cocktail, um, and just talking about what GeekWire needed to grow. And he's like, wait a minute, we need you. And you know, John and Todd are absolutely the ultimate professionals in what they do. They're great uh, writers, they're great reporters, they're great journalists, and they need something to do everything else. I'm the everything else girl, you know, whether it's sales or events or operations or finances. Uh, we got to keep the lights on and grow and, you know, take over the world. Nice. Um, so I'm looking around. I've been around the Seattle tech community for a while. Like five, six years ago, we didn't have events like this, right? It seems like something's coalescing. Is that your sense? Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, if you stretch back a little longer, and you're probably not old enough, you know, <laughs> 10 years ago, you know, sort of during the boom days, you'd see big sort of ostentatious parties, you know, uh, not under <laughs> under an awning at Gasworks, but in swanky hotels. I Here's my opinion, uh, is that over time, we've gotten critical mass, where it used to be Microsoft was the big tech employer, but now we've got Microsoft, Amazon, Expedia, yeah, look at the gaming community absolutely exploding. The PopCap IPO, we've got Big Fish Games, um, and I'm leaving out probably 10 more big tech companies. When you have more than one, and now I think a critical mass of big tech companies that hire, that keeps talent in Seattle, and that brings talent to Seattle. So if you do a startup, and it doesn't work out, maybe eight times out of ten it doesn't, you've got a great employer who's just dying to snap up engineer, engineering talent. So we've got this balance of talent and big companies, yet we've got really smart people, research capacity, um, you know, some of the best uh, public education and research facilities in the nation. You put that all in a pot, get some money into the mix, people who've made some millions off of Microsoft or Google or whatnot, putting that fuel back in the tank of the entrepreneurial engine, and boom, we're at I think we're at critical mass, and uh, and it's just really exciting to be a part of it. That's awesome. Well, thanks for helping organize the event tonight. It's awesome, and um, yeah, it's great to be here with Rebecca, the chief <laughs> business awesomer from GeekWire. Thanks.